A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human delicate tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledges, if I have faith as so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. 
Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory. His disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a few moments. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Father Johns. I'm the pastor here at uh, St. John Vianney's Parish. And on behalf of Frank and Laura and their families, I want to welcome everybody to the wedding ceremony. I want to thank you for coming. And then on behalf of all your guests, I want to say congratulations and best wishes to the two of you on your wedding day. For those of you who don't know their uh, history, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it goes back quite a ways. Uh, it's actually about 10 years ago that they first would have been in the same area. They both went to South High School and uh, both graduated uh, from South High. They were just a year apart. Uh, they didn't really get to know each other at South. But a couple years later, um, it was right around Christmas time of 2014, that um, they met at Frank's parents' pizza shop. If I got it right, <laughs> that Laura came uh, to get a pizza, and in addition to getting a pizza, she got Frank's phone number, something like that. <laughs> so they exchanged uh, phone numbers. That was right around Christmas time of uh, 2014. And then uh, just a couple weeks later, they went on their first date. So first date was on the Feast of the Epiphany, January 4th, 2015, right after the holidays were over. They had their very first date, and um, Frank took Laura to a Red Robin restaurant. <laughs> and uh, they told me that uh, in addition to getting something to eat, they actually spent three hours sitting there talking, getting to know each other. And then uh, based on that, they decided uh, a couple weeks later to start dating. So their first official date was on the day before Valentine's Day, February 13th, 2015. And um, he went up a step and took her to Canados for dinner. So a little bit better than Red Rabbit. Upgrade. So, and, and then at that uh, dinner, on the day before Valentine's Day, they talked about officially dating. And uh, Frank actually did something nice. He, put on a cupcake, would you be my valentine? And, uh, she said yes, and uh, that started uh, a pretty long period of dating. So uh, from February 2015 till Labor Day weekend of 2018. So after three and a half years of dating on uh, September 3rd, 2018, the day before Labor Day, um, Frank proposed and they became engaged. So. That was back uh, Labor Day, so really just uh, a couple years ago around now, three years ago uh, around now. They had a tough time finding a date to get married with COVID. I have their uh, marriage folder. I think I have five dates on it. <laughs> Remember, they had to switch it uh, so many times. I think it was uh, June of 2020, and then it was going to be the fall, and then it was going to be the spring. And then it was going to be early summer, and now it's happening. So, you know, I just give you credit. You stuck with it, and everything worked out okay. So, you got all your family and friends here. You had a beautiful day to get married. So, uh, congratulations on doing that. So, um, today, August 7th, is your anniversary. So, that's their history. It's going to be their anniversary date. So, I just uh, tried to think of some advice. Uh, to share with you, I came up with a few things. Number one, uh, whenever I have a couple like you, I just encourage them to thank God for the families they came from. So I know the Vidmar family for years here at St. John Vianney's, and then I've gotten to know you and your family. I think both of you would be the first to say you were blessed. So I told the parents, you did a good job. You know, really both of them have turned out very well. And I would just encourage you to try and learn from your parents. So Bob and Joanne, if you had about 30 years of marriage, Mark and Debbie, about the same, right? So you got all that experience right there. So I just encourage you to try to imitate, uh, learn from their example. One of the many things they did right 
because they got involved in a parish. So we were at St. Noel's, your family here at St. John Vianney's. I would just encourage you to do the same thing. You know, today you get married in a church, and I believe that the closer you stay to the church, the better you do uh, in your marriage. So I encourage you to, you know, get involved here at the St. John Vianney's. To remind you to do that, um, a couple years ago, or many years ago, we had this uh, Christmas ornament made. So it says St. John Vianney's 2002. That's when this building was built. It's got the Star of Bethlehem, to remind you of Christmas, and how the Star led them to Christ. And it says St. John Vianney's. So I would encourage you when you celebrate your first Christmas as a married couple, you know, put this on the tree as a reminder of that stay close to the parish. I have several cases of these, so I've been giving them to every bride. <laughs> We overbought. <laughs> yes, so, but I think it's a nice gift. It'll always remind you of what I spoke about on your wedding day. Stay close to your parish and stay close to the Lord. So I think that helps you a lot. And in addition to that, I'd say, you know, stay close to the Blessed Mother. You know, the gospel uh, reading today was Mary was at a wedding feast. They ran out of wine. And she told her son, you know, do something to help this couple. Today, you've invited Christ to be at your wedding. Mary, on that first day in Cana, told uh, everybody, do whatever my son tells you. And I think that's good advice uh, for marriage, too. So do whatever Jesus tells you and stay close to Mary. To remind you of that, um, this is a rosary blessed by Pope Francis. I don't have cases of this, so this one's special. <laughs> and I know that you're a devout Catholic. And that the faith means a lot to your family. I know that uh, personally. So, whenever you go through a tough time, take the rosary out. It helps you to calm down and to say a few prayers. And remember how Mary said, "Do whatever my son tells you." And if you do that, uh, things tend to work out. So, that's uh, the important thing: stay close to the church, to Jesus and to Mary. I think another piece of advice. Um, Here's what I think you ought to think about is that God gave both of you a gift at Christmas. It's way back in 2014. You didn't know it then, but God gave you the gift of Frank. And God gave you the gift of Laura at Christmas time of 2014. And then your first date was on Epiphany, the day of giving gifts, you know, to the Christ child. So always try and be grateful. You know, be grateful to God for the gift of each other. Be grateful to God for all the blessings that you have. And then I just encourage you, uh, you got engaged on Labor Day weekend. So always remember that marriage takes work. You know, hard work. Yeah. Just like you've worked at making this day happen. Just like you worked to make a nice engagement happen. Work at the marriage, you know, every day. And uh, always remember that the critical thing to keep doing is communicating and to love each other like Christ loves. So that's the model for you, Frank. Love Laura like Christ loves you. You love Frank the way Christ loves you. So that's that second reading from St. Paul. That defines how to love each other. So that would be my advice uh, to you. Learn from your families. Stay close to the parents, to the Lord, the Blessed Mother. Keep working at it. And uh, always be grateful. And the last gift, um, gift certificate to Red Robin so you can take a back there. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to invite you to come forward now to exchange your wedding vows along with the bridal party. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and your family, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may remain faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of God, I ask you to now state your intentions. Frank and Laura, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? 
I have. Yeah. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I, I am. am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? I am. I am. Well, since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you now to join your hands and declare your consent before God and His church. So, Frank, you go first and repeat after me. I, Frank, take you, Laura. I, Frank, take you, Laura. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And then Laura, repeat after me. I, Laura, take you, Frank. I, Laura, take you, Frank. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Very good. Let us pray. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Frank, repeat after me. Laura, receive this ring. Laura, receive this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And my fidelity. And my fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. And Laura, repeat after me. Frank, receive this ring. Frank, receive this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And my fidelity. And my fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that we've heard God's word and felt his presence and Frank and Laura's exchange of vows, let us present these needs. For Laura and Frank, newly joined in holy matrimony, may they have the Lord's blessings and guidance as they become one heart and one soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, poor, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they might be strengthened by God's help and aided by their friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Amen. prayer. For those who are married and entering marriage, may they continue to give and be able to forgive as they continue on their journey together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the families throughout the world and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our loving relatives who have left us, Albert, Lillian, and Annette Vidmar, Grandpa Melons, Grandpa John Fox, Frank and Jane Aveni, and all that have departed. May their souls rest in peace 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the church, government leaders, and all other prayers that we hold silent in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you hear the prayers that we bring to you today from Frank and Laura. Keep them united to one another and to you, and watch over and protect all of us, and help us to be good disciples of your Son. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for our offertory procession. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of Mary. And just as your goodness is its origin, May your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have made the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church. Through Christ, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy. saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving things, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand now and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we together pray. Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Dear friends, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, Frank and Laura, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by this holy covenant. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church, look now with favor on Laura and Frank. They are joined together in marriage. They ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Laura. Let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. They frame and trust his heart to her. So that, acknowledging her as his equal, and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always, as Christ cherishes his bride, the church. Now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith, keep your commandments, may they one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all that they do, and with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children, and prove themselves to be virtuous parents who will live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us offer to those around us a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Mr. and Mrs. Green and Laura Fox. Yeah. 